I welcome you to this National Society of Professional Engineers 39th Annual Federal Engineer of the Year Award Ceremony. My name is Tom Roberts. I'm president of the National Society of Professional Engineers, and it's a privilege and an honor to welcome you to this ceremony. You know, today we honor 31 exceptional engineers. And what's particularly rewarding about this occasion is that they're all federal government exceptional engineers. Engineering is an important and a learned profession. And as professional engineers, we're expected to exhibit the highest honor, the highest standards of honesty and integrity. So to start off today's celebration, we're honored to have Emily Blount, Director of Engineering Technology and Geospatial Services for the U.S. Forest Service, headquartered here in Washington, D.C. I just want to say, wow, what an amazing, good-looking, great-looking group of engineers that are out there. Uh, I'm so honored to be here today. I just can't explain enough what a privilege this is. Well, I went to a small rural high school in eastern North Carolina, and my graduating class was probably less than 200. But I took a course in mechanical drafting, and I loved it. I loved the feel of a mechanical pencil, the mechanical templates, the tools, laying out my ideas on graph paper. And yes, this was before AutoCAD. I'm de definitely dating myself. Um, but I remember vividly one assignment. Our teacher had to sit at the end of a long hallway and try to draw what we saw at the other end and, and use scale and depth and shading. And he explained to us, this is what architects do. And I said, all right, I like this. I think I will take this on. And so I had an opportunity between my junior and senior year of high school to go to North Carolina State University and have a week-long architecture camp. Has anyone ever done that? I don't even know if they still allow that, but it was phenomenal. But I gotta tell you, um, I was in the dorm that week, and I was with students from all over the U.S. And I can tell you, I felt completely quickly and completely out of my element. These students came with entire portfolios of their work. They had designs of skyscrapers and college campuses and community developments. I had my hallway assignment. Um, so I, rem I remember not only feeling out of place by how much they knew, but also uh, they talked in more of an abstract language. They were a very free thinking group, more like a creative artist. And I struggle with that. Um, my interests were more in the precision of the tools and the accuracy of the measurements and in calculating and knowing that there was just one right answer. Well, thank goodness the professor recognized my struggles because he took the time to introduce me to engineering career fields. And I think back now on how fortunate I was, and I'm sure my parents, to know this before I started college. You know, often we set out on a path or we make decisions because of perceptions that we have or opinions of others. When I graduated from college, I had no interest in pursuing a federal career. And I think back now on why that was, and I believe it was partially because at that time in the mid-1980s, there were a significant number of engineers graduating and very few jobs. I remember vividly camping out in hopes of getting one of the 50 interview slots for the next day. And the companies that came to my campus were industry and utilities and heavy construction and manufacturing. The federal government wasn't visible. They did not come and recruit to the campuses, and frankly, I didn't see it as a challenging and rewarding career. I accepted a not to exceed 18-month position with the Air Force. My thoughts were this is a short-term commitment. It's closer to family. I'll have time to look for something else. Again, I never intended for federal government to become a career. But I will never forget my first supervisor. He instilled in me his values around the profession of engineering. He proudly displayed his PE license, and he encouraged all of the engineers, both civilian and military, to become licensed. As work permitted, he let us take time during the day to study, and I remember him giving me administrative leave when I went to sit for the exam. He recognized that federal engineers must be on an equal footing and of the same caliber as engineers in the private sector. And the best way to ensure this was by becoming a licensed professional engineer. So again, I've mentioned several times that I did not believe federal government would be an exciting or rewarding career, but I cannot tell you 
how wrong I was. The more I moved within federal government, the greater my awareness became of the vast engineering skill sets needed and the role of a public servant. So some might wonder, with a background like that in DOD, how in the world did I score such a great job with the Forest Service, the US Forest Service? And I can tell you, I've, I've never been so pleased. Um, for me, I believe one of the reasons was is because I forced myself to get out of my element, my comfort zone. Engineers have so many skill sets needed in federal government leadership roles, but often we want to stay with what's familiar. We want to hold on to that mechanical pencil. Without a doubt, working for the U.S. Forest Service has been the most challenging career in my entire, my entire career, the most challenging position, even more so than working on the Pentagon, uh, Pentagon renovation program uh, with a $1 million per day budget. This past November, the Congressional Research Service prepared a report to Congress on the U.S. science and engineering workforce, and they began their report with this statement. The adequacy of the U.S. science and engineering workforce has been an ongoing concern of Congress for more than 60 years. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics projects the total number of openings in engineering occupations between 2016 and 2026 to be 1.3 million. Obviously, with any statistics, there are people on both sides who can present the data in a variety of ways. Is there a shortage? Should government get involved or let industry drive jobs? Should immigration and visa laws be enhanced to allow more foreign scientists and engineers? Regardless of the varying thoughts, there was one area of agreement. Increasing the number of US engineers will increase US innovation, economic performance, and job creation. You are being recognized here today for various achievements across numerous government agencies. And as this report further stated, your work has advanced the U.S. in technological leadership, in innovation, and your work is vital to the strength of the U.S. economy, to our nation's defense, and to other societal needs. Well, the theme for 2018 is Engineers Inspiring Wonder. That is awesome. Engineers Inspiring Wonder. So in closing, I ask that you make a concerted effort to reach out and inspire wonder and encourage the next generation to consider engineering careers, and more so to share with them your experience as a federal government engineer. We need to make these careers, as we know, be as exciting and rewarding as they have been for us, and we need to be able to communicate that to the next generation. So again, thank you, congratulations as a 2018 Federal Engineer of the Year Award nominees. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, it really is a pleasure to be here today performing what is one of my favorite annual NSPE duties, uh, which also coincidentally was one of my first NSPE duties when I started about this time of year, five years ago. Uh, it also, as Emily refers to, brings to the end a very full week of National Engineers Week's activity. Over the last 39 years, the FAYA program has honored hundreds of accomplished professional engineers, uh, and we're very pleased to have many of them in the audience and to be adding a very prestigious class this year. What all of you do every day is worthy of recognition. Now it is my distinct honor and pleasure to present the 10 engineers from among all the agency winners who were chosen by our judging panel as NSPE's top 10 federal engineers of the year. And now, on behalf of the National Society of Professional Engineers and Professional Engineers in Government, it gives me great pleasure to announce the 2018 Federal Engineer of the Year. Will you please join me on stage, Colonel John Henderson, PE, U.S. Department of Army, Army Corps of Engineers, Omaha District. John, please come forward. First of all, um, this is a great honor. I uh, wasn't really expecting this. I was aware of some of the other uh, 
uh, nominations and some of the accomplishments. And uh, it is just a, just a great group of people, very well qualified and, uh, and some amazing accomplishments. And uh, um, I'm uh, very humbled and honored to be recognized among this group. So thank you very much. I want to thank the NSPE for doing this, for our engineers and for our profession. Uh, I think this means a lot. And uh, I would challenge, I would, I would echo Ms. Blanc's remarks. I would challenge each of us to go out and find somebody in the next generation to inspire, to replace us. And it's hugely important. And we really see that in the federal government. Um, if you can imagine a, if you can imagine a, uh, a situation where our soldiers or our airmen uh, or our sailors uh, go into some type of a conflict on behalf of the people of our nation and, and don't have the technological advantage that we do now, um, it very quickly becomes apparent how important our professions in engineering and science and architecture and mathematics are for our nation. And so I would say of greatest strategic importance for all of us uh, to find that next person to inspire to come into the profession. And if you're old enough, Go down two more generations and find somebody else to bring into the profession. Uh, we need it. It's important for our nation. And, and thank you. It's societies like this, societies like this, the Society of American Military Engineers, General Shodell, it's good to see you, uh, and, and other societies out there uh, that promote our profession, promote the professional development of our profession and the importance of it, and, <coughs> excuse me, and inspire uh, the next generation. I want to thank General Spellman. Uh, for the nomination, so thank you, sir. It's been an absolute honor to work and serve with you uh, in the Army. And, uh, and finally, uh, I have to say, as a commander, uh, the nomination was put in while I was commanding the Omaha District, and there is no way that any commander could ever claim that he does anything as an individual accomplishment, so to speak. And so I just, I have to say, and I want to say, uh, I would accept this award on behalf of 1,300 engineering professionals and project management professionals out of the Omaha district who have done some incredibly amazing things. Uh, and it's with great gratitude that I was be able to, to serve for a very short time uh, with that team with the Corps of Engineers and, and be a part of that, a very small part of that as it were. Um, and so I just I would like to accept this on their behalf as a team because uh, let's face it, uh, uh, this, this job of being in the military is a team sport. So thank you again, sir. I appreciate it. Um, it's a great honor and thank you. Thank you.